now to get them rotated, rotating differently. I need to add what I call an orientation attribute. It's kind of which way it's facing, and then a speed, which takes what that was from and adds to it, or subtracts from it to get that value to change and then spin. So let's add our first attribute and like scale rotation is x, y, and z so it's a vector so we call this custom orient and everything else looks good and sometimes when it doesn't update you can just click there and back and there it shows up So at birth, I'm going to want every particle to have, you know, a random value for its rotations. So to do that, unlike scale, when we want them to be the same, now we can just put random value for everything. Just copying this for now. So instead of putting 0 and 8, I could have just put 8, but I'll just do that with 360. So that means anything between 0 and 360 it just assumes you mean zero, it'll put that value in there. So it saves some typing. Alright. Now we can go ahead and plug that in to our orientation or rotation. Custom orient. Now it's not going to change yet because we haven't written that speed attribute. Let's see now they're all rotated differently. To get them to move over time, we're going to add another attribute, like I said before, called speed. Custom speed. And this is just a float value that's going to add. So let's say this got 20, 10, and 5. This is going to get another value between negative 10 and 10, so 10, and this was 20 or whatever every frame it'll get added to and make it spin. So that looks good. And it's not there so we'll refresh by doing that. There it is. So now each particle will get this value assigned to it that we'll use later in the runtime expression. Alright. So now it's still not going to do anything if we rewind. Nothing's going to change. Because now we're going to add these two together in our runtime expression. So we want it to equal whatever it was before plus this. So we can use the handy dandy shortcut plus equals that means take whatever it is plus this value for each of the vectors and it just converts it so you don't have to do anything else. That's pretty good now they will rotate over time. If I expand my timeline here. There you go. Some are moving fast, some are moving slow. And you can get further in depth with this and have their rotations based on 
mass, which is also based on scale, which I can show you next time.